Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 30th, 2016. This one's from NASA. This was sent by my friend Alan F. NASA moves to begin historic new era of X-plane research. Probably you remember the X-1 and Chuck Yeager and that story. Well, now NASA's aeronautical innovators once again are preparing to put in the sky an array of new experimental aircraft, each intended to carry on the legacy of demonstrating advanced technologies that will push back the frontiers of aviation. Goals include showcasing how airliners can burn half the fuel and generate 75% less pollution during each flight as compared to now, while also being much quieter than today's jets, perhaps even when flying supersonic. What I'm looking for, if they could possibly do it, I think the, the goals of the fuel efficiency and a lot of the other stuff will be just a incremental thing, but I think if they can get through the barrier of producing a plane that could go supersonic and not make that loud boom, that would be quite an accomplishment. That's the real thing to uh, make the flight times a lot faster. And if they can also do it with saving fuel, how much the better. So it says if we can build some of these X planes and demonstrate some of these technologies, we expect that it will make it much easier and faster for U.S. industry to pick them up and roll with them into the marketplace. Ed Wagoner, NASA's Integrated Aviation Systems Program Director. People don't know it, but NASA a lot of times is the one that leads the way in these aviation breakthroughs. And because once they figure out these things and how to do it experimentally, then what they do is they share it equally with everybody. There's no keeping this thing, you know, confident or any kind of business secrets or anything like that. So that's the nice thing about NASA. And they talk about the three-legged stool. People think, think uh, in this age of high-speed computers and stuff like that, you just do the modeling and why are you building the craft and following them? Well, that's just uh, one part of the solution and it says here but in this age of high-speed computers capable of generating sophisticated simulations and with the availability of world-class wind tunnels to test high fidelity models why still the need to fly something like an x-plane the answer has to do with what Wagoner he's one of the scientists describes as the necessity of a three-legged stool one rig one leg represents computational capabilities, the second leg represents experimental methods, but the third leg is you have to actually build one and take it out and fly it because things can enter one thing can interfere with the other. You can get one answer from the computational model, you can get another answer from wind tunnel um, things, and it can get you in the ballpark, but it's not going to get you all the way. So it says now you've got three different ways to look at the same problem, Wagner said, and it's only through doing all that together we will ever get to the point where we've lowered the risk enough to completely trust what our numbers are telling us. So um, it's a help. The computer, mo the small models, the computer design stuff like that is helpful, but until you build it full scale and fly it, that's the only time you really know what's going to work and how it's going to work. As usual, links to all these stories will be down in the descriptions below. And this next one is from the Washington Post. This city the city embedded traffic lights in the sidewalk so that smartphone users don't have to look up. Now, how many of us did not see this coming someday? Few nations in the world take red traffic lights more seriously than Germany. Foreign visitors frequently wonder why crowds of Germans waiting, wait for traffic lights to turn green when there are no cars in sight. That is why officials in the city of Augsburg became concerned when they noticed a new phenomenon. Pedestrians were so busy looking at their smartphones that they were ignoring traffic lights. The city has att attempted to solve this problem by installing new traffic lights embedded in the pavement so the pedestrians constantly can, looking down at their phones won't miss them. It creates a whole new level of attention. City spokeswoman Stephanie Lerman was quoted as saying, Lerman thinks the money is wisely spent. A recent study conducted in several European cities, including Berlin, found that almost 20% of pedestrians were distracted by their smartphones. Younger people are more likely to be at risk for safety for a quick look at their Facebook profiles or WhatsApp messages, the survey found. The problem may be more widespread in the United States, so we may see this coming to the United States. I don't know. If people are that concentrated on what they're doing on Facebook, is even the traffic lights or signals on the pavement going to do any good? I mean, maybe something like flashing yellow lights at, uh, before you reach the crosswalk might be better. Uh, I don't know the real answer aside from maybe making something, if you really want people to safe, making one of those drop-down barricades like they do with the railroad crossings so that you just can't physically do it. You'll run into something rather than running out on the street. Um, that's all I can think of or something. If it if it gets to that point, they may have to do something like that. Um, let me know what your answer is to it uh, in the comments below. And, and another thing I wanted to talk about, this uh, last article here, um, I wanted to add to it with something different after the article, and I'll talk about that in a second. From the independent.co.uk, free will could, be all, could all be an illusion, scientists suggest after a study shows that choice could be just the brain tricking itself. 
Uh, since free will might be an illusion created by our brains, scientists might have proved, and these studies even go back uh, 20 years, the idea that human beings tricked themselves into believing in free will was laid out in a paper by psychologists David Winger and Thalia Wheatley nearly 20 years ago. They proposed the feeling of wanting to do something was real, but maybe no connection between the feeling and actually doing it. So the new study builds on that work, and it says the brain rewrites history when it makes choices. What they did in this study was they showed, uh, the Princeton University did the study, and they showed test subjects showed five white circles on a computer monitor. They were told to choose one of the circles before one of them lit up red. The participants were then asked to describe whether they picked the correct circle, another one, or if they didn't have time. Now, statistically, that means they should have been right one out of five times or 20 percent, but um, they were going over 30 percent if uh, in what they thought that they were guessing correctly or not. So evidently there was some kind of change in thinking there. So the scientists suggest that the findings show that the test subjects' minds were swapped, were swapping around the order of events so that it appeared they had chosen the right circle even if they hadn't actually had time to do so. And this is a little experiment too, a kind of a mind experiment that uh, I heard on the radio. Just one time I heard somebody talk about that and it's kind of like a, a telekinesis type of experiment. And being a skeptic, I don't believe there's any at least yet there's any proof of telekinesis but they said as you're driving down the street if you see a light up ahead of you and it's uh, turned green for quite a while you know the chances are probably as you approach the light it's probably going to turn yellow well look at the green light and concentrate on it and see if you can using your mind power or willing it to stay green long enough for you to go through and I've I've done that on numerous numerous occasions and it really actually seems like it works it seems to my brain, and I even did it today actually coming back, I drove in towards Chicago and coming back, I drove through obviously lots and lots of traffic lights and I noticed as I would concentrate on green lights far up ahead they would seem to stay green longer whereas normally in my mind I would think by that time that I would get up to them they would turn yellow because it, was, it seemed in my mind to be quite a long time so my mind was, was telling me that what I was doing was very effective but I think it's more a psychological trick of the mind because in normal driving you're not concentrating that way you're you're gawking you're looking around you you're you're maybe glancing at the light but you're paying attention to way more things so i think the time factor of when you notice these things and the fact that you're concentrating on the the light all the way from when you first see it up ahead all the way to going through it which you never do under normal conditions i think that's more of a brain trick but i would like you as an experiment if you've never done it before or tell me the results if you do know of this thing that i heard on the radio and you've done it before when you drive, if you're in an area that has a lot of traffic signals, do that kind of experiment too. Look way up ahead, maybe a, you know, a quarter mile or an eighth of a mile for those green lights and see if by staring at it and concentrating on it, it doesn't seem to your own mind like you're locking it into green longer than it should be and allowing yourself to pass through the intersection. Now, I'm still thinking in my mind there's no telekinesis. It's just a trick of the mind, but it just it seems to work so much that it tells me psych psychologically what your mind is doing and what you think your mind is doing can be two different things. So um, it's not exactly the thing about free will versus, you know, not having free will. It's not exactly that, but it just this kind of experiment called this to mind. And uh, I don't know myself of, a, of an experiment you could actually have to be able to for sure know whether we have free will or not, or if everything, if you could go back and rerun the universe from the start would everything happen exactly the same way if the conditions were exactly the same at the start of the universe and we could do it somewhere else and rerun it would everything be exactly the same even right up to this point every exact little atom be in the same place everything that happened to you today would happen again in a duplicate way exactly before I don't know how to experimentally to uh, to test it if anybody has any more articles on that or any, any ideas I've read a lot about it but um, yeah I've got a great audience that looks up things and sends me articles all the time. So if you have any information, any comments about that, please leave them below. And as usual, thank you for everybody that's contributed to the TDD report. And uh, that's enough for this week. I will catch you next week.